Today, I am excited to share the Word of God with you, so let's get started. A person with a healthy self-image can say, I know that God created me. You're not an accident, you were created. Purposefully, carefully, intricately created in your mother's womb with God's hand. <laughs> with God's hand. You have a set of fingerprints that's not like anybody else's in the whole world. You are unique, and anything that's unique is more valuable than something that's just the same as everything else. God has a purpose for you, <laughs> and he loves you unconditionally. And I love this scripture, Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. Even as in his love, he chose us. Can everybody say, I'm chosen? I'm chosen. Say that again. I'm chosen. God didn't just get stuck with you. He chose you. He picked you out, actually picked us out for himself as his own in Christ. He didn't pick us out because we deserve to be picked out, but because we believe in Jesus and he sees us as in Christ, he picked us out for himself as being someone who is in Christ. And he did it before the foundation of the world, so that means before you did anything right or wrong, he chose you. Now, you know, I don't know about you, but I think everybody likes to be chosen. Everybody wants to be the one that's picked. You know, the Bible says that we're the apple of his eye. And if you don't overly spiritualize that and you think about it, if you go to the store and you're hungry and you're going to buy one apple, you just don't go in and pick one up and go to the register and pay for it. You pick several up and you look them over really good and you get the one that you think is going to be the very best. And God says, you're the apple of his eye. You're the apple that he would choose. You say, well, how can we all be the apple of his eye? Because God is God, and he can do everything for everybody all at the same time. That's why he can say, you're special, you're the best, you're the most important, and really mean it, because he can have that kind of an intimate, special relationship with every one of us all at the same time. Come on. I'm not letting you out of here today until you decide to like yourself. You say, well, I'm 20 pounds overweight. How can I like myself? Well, to tell you the truth, if you start liking yourself a little bit better, you might lose some weight. Because I'll tell you, one of the things that happens when we don't like who we are, there's an empty place on the inside of us that sometimes we try to fill up with food. And we're not really hungry for something else to eat. We're hungry for the fulfillment that only God can give us. But that's another message. I don't have time to go there. Did anybody even remotely understand that? No. That's why it seems like no matter what you eat, you never get full or satisfied sometimes. Jesus said, if you eat of me and drink of me, <laughs> In John chapter 6, you'll never hunger and you'll never thirst. I'm the living food. I'm the living bread. I'm the living drink. Anyway, like I said, that's another message. But You just would be amazed at all the things that will fix in your life if you decide to love yourself in a balanced way and know who you are in Christ. Now, I'll tell you what, if you've heard this over and over, then this is a good reminder for you, but if this is the first time you're hearing anything like this, it's gonna take you quite a while to let it sink in. 
Because somehow or another, we think that it's almost spiritual to think that we're no good. Well, I'm just a poor, miserable, wretched sinner, and I just, I'm just this awful person, and oh, God, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry. You know, sometimes we get so, I, I mean, I actually did this the other morning. We get so accustomed to being sorry and I said the other morning, I don't even know why I said it, I said, oh God, I'm so sorry. And it was almost like he said, for what? <laughs> I think it's like we're always apologizing for ourselves because we just, we know that we fall short, but that's exactly why we need Jesus. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be sorry for our sins. The Bible says to weep and grieve and even mourn over your sins but I've learned that I can do it really quick and get right back to knowing who I am in Christ and pressing on with the good things that God has for me. Want to hear more from Joyce on this topic? We've got you covered. Visit us in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org today.